Hello, hello, hello. How's everybody doing? This is going to be a quick lesson. It's been a long day. How's everybody doing tonight? I'm just getting started on this piece here. It's going to be my um, display at my new booth. And before I started to paint it, I wanted to show you just a little bit about when I decide um, whether or not I am going to use slick stick or not. And this isn't my face, that's okay. So when you come on, say hi. My name is Michaela from Paint Fixation in Middle Park, Florida. Um, and my new location will be at Junk on the Trunk, but my paint hasn't come in yet. So that's why we're kind of, I just haven't gotten started on my display yet. I've had a crazy couple days. I sold two pieces of furniture this weekend. I had to deliver one today, which was unexpected, but a very nice surprise. So, um, so it's been a busy day and I haven't had time to get to do what I wanted to do tonight on my live. So I just wanted to pop in here real quick. So the lady that I sold a piece to today, she gave me this piece here and let me see if I can bring it down just a little bit. She gave me this piece here. Um, she just gave it to me. She told me I could have it. I could do what I wanted with it. And so looking at it, this is, I'm going to bring it closer because I just want to show you where I think some of the confusion comes in with slick stick. So this piece here is kind of a no brainer. Okay. I'm going to bring you around here. All right. This is like plastic. Okay. This looks like wood. It's not wood. Hi, Judy. Um, I've already taken the shelves out of it and it had two doors down here. Woo, almost dropped you. It had two doors down here. I took those out. I'm going to have the shelves all the way up for my new paint display. I'm thinking kudzu. What do y'all think for color? I'm thinking kudzu. I might do something um, different maybe on the sides. You won't be able to see the inside of it. I might do a lighter color in the back. But I'm thinking kudzu and then maybe a little bit of grunge or something just to show um, how the Dixie Bell paint can work on a piece like that. And then this piece over here, I'm just getting all, that, all over the place. I'm going to bring it back over here. Okay, so this piece here is the one she gave me that I told me that I could have and that I could paint. And when I was looking at it, I thought, you know, I think some people might get confused about a piece like this, about whether or not to use slick stick on it or not. Okay, so this piece came from Pier 1. My phone keeps going all weird. Um, it's, it's from Pier 1. This is not wood. In fact, even though I did a little test sanding on the back of one of the legs, just for my own, you know, curiosity, I just realized right before I started live is that there's a chip right here. And I'm going to see if I can get, see that right there. That's not wood. I don't know what it is. It's some kind of a solid surface, something or another. But this piece is different than this other piece. Okay, let me turn it this way just so y'all can kind of see. Okay, so this piece is very clearly a plastic laminate cover, okay? You could probably peel this off very easily. It's um, particle board, very, very heavy. You can almost always tell it's particle board by the weight. Um, it's almost always two times heavier than it looks like it's gonna be. Um, so this piece I knew right away, slick stick. Okay, it's in really good, it's almost brand new condition. I got it from the thrift store for 15 bucks. Um, it's like an office piece of furniture or whatever. So this was a good deal. It's gonna be perfect for my first this display over there because I'm not going premiere over there yet. But um, this was a no brainer. This kind of thing is a no brainer. This, glass, mirrors, all those are no brainers. A piece like this can be a little tricky because it looks like it could be maybe sanded, but if you sand this this type of wood, I'm trying to, I had good light just a second ago. I don't know, it's all being wonky. But if you were to sand back a little bit on this and then paint it with a light color, you're gonna have stain. It's gonna be, I don't even know what kind of, what kind of material it is, but anytime I've ever tried to paint a piece like this and I sanded it first, it was a nightmare because it it just bled. It wasn't like tannins from wood. It's like just, I don't even know. But 
So I am not going to touch this with sandpaper. <laughs> I'm going to clean it really, really well, and I'm going to use slick stick on it. Now, I'm not sure, does anybody have an um, idea on color? Because I haven't thought of a color yet. It's just a little TV cabinet. It's got these little doors. Um, the only thing that, it has a little musty smell in it. Um, so it's, it's not wood. So um, instead of like Big Mama's butter, I, I may actually end up putting clear boss on the inside of these. Just, I might open them up and see. It could just be from her house, you know, just different smells and stuff. And I don't know how old the piece is, but, um, but it's a cute little piece. Does anybody have any recommendations on color? I'm open to any. She had these, she had these handles on it which I'm not a huge fan of, but my daughter loves. These, like, little glass ones. And then the ones that came with it are just your typical rub oil, web oil bronze things. Uh, I got it for free. If I find some handle, you know, find some knobs that are really good price, I might buy knobs for it. It only needs four. So if Hobby Lobby has a sale or something, I might pop in there and see if they have anything kind of cool. But, um... But I wanted to just show you that even though these two pieces look different on the outside, you know, this one definitely has the appearance of a veneer. Like a veneer, a veneer is a wood layer. Usually, um, it's a nicer wood that's over the top of a less expensive wood. Okay, so if you're working with veneer, you still really don't need slick stick unless it has a shiny top coat like a polyurethane and you're not going to sand it back if you're going to sand it you don't need slick stick okay um and i mean it says it right on the right on here bonds to glossy and other hard shiny surfaces to allow effective painting so basically anything that is not porous you want to use all this on now, there are people who have very good success by using just a thin coat of paint first and letting that dry overnight, similar to how you would do slick stick, and then putting thin coats of paint, and it adheres very well. Because there was a time where this wasn't part of the paint line, and we painted it on paint, you know, we painted it on glass and everything else. It's just, um, this is a more assured adherence, you know, um, there are times when I thought I was going to use it and I didn't use it and I had good success. Boss, if I, I just, I know from previous experience with this type of material, I don't even, if anyone on here knows what this is, this stuff is, let me know. Um, it's, it's very strange. It's got a chip in it and the chip comes out black. So I don't even know what it's made out of. I just know that in the past, oops, I forgot to turn off my notifications. Sorry, guys. Hang on. I just popped in here quickly. Um, because I didn't go live this weekend. I had a mother's weekend, so I didn't we my kids were like, we don't want you to work, we want you to hang out with us. So that's what I did. Family always comes first with me, guys. <laughs> so um in the past I've done tables and stuff out of this material and I have had to sand it and that was a mistake. It, like I said, it wasn't like it's a tannin coming through. It's just like whatever this, whatever this, because, you know, it says on here stains, not just tannin, stains. If you have a piece that, say, has a burnt area and it's smooth, but it's still burnt, I would boss that. I've had experience with burnt areas. They don't like to be painted, so I would boss that. If you had a piece that had, um... Any, any any kind of a stain that, that bleeds through paint, and I could come up with some that are gross, but, um, you know, there are some stains that just you can't get up. They don't, they want to bleed through paint, so you boss them, okay? The thing about boss is if you think you don't need boss and you paint a layer of paint on and then you start to see spots like on a table, just spots of bleed through coming through. You don't have to boss the entire table. Just boss what's bleeding through before your second coat. 
put your second coat on and see if it stopped. If you have other pieces coming through, just spot do it. You know, um, you'll learn from experience that, you know, you'll just, I think that through experience, you'll know when you look at a piece, you'll say, that needs boss. I'm just going to boss the whole thing. I'm going to do it first, get it over with, and not worry about it. I have had pieces. I just sold a uh, Art Deco waterfall buffet. That thing w was a heavy bleeder. That is one that I boss. I mean, there are others that wouldn't work on it. Um, it was just one of those types of wood. It was old and um, it took, I want to say two coats of boss. It might have even, in some areas, I believe I even used three coats of boss on it. Um, it was a heavy bleeder, and I ended up changing my um, color palette for it. I went from, you know, the typical, it sells great white, to antebellum blue. <laughs> so it took longer to sell it, but it did sell this weekend. So, you know, you can keep that in mind too. Sometimes you've got to change, change your idea about what you're going to do. And um, so use, use kind of, you know, like I just did earlier, I sanded the back of the leg to kind of get an idea. What am, what am I working with here? You know, is it wood? It's not wood. Then I saw the chip. It's clearly not wood. So um, this whole piece is getting slick stick. That whole piece is getting slick stick. If anyone wants to come have a slick stick party, come on, you can help me. It is boring <laughs> to slick stick, but I'm gonna do it. So I tomorrow I've got all the shelves to do. We've got the whole thing, and you know, with slick stick, you put a coat on, you wait. Hi, Jackie. You wait two hours for it to dry, and then you put another coat on, and you let that coat dry overnight. Now I know some people want to rush the process. Um, and it can be fine. Um, a lot of people have done that. But if you do rush the process and it doesn't work out the way you wanted it to, don't blame the product, okay? You just, you need to just realize that, you know, some pieces aren't going to need the overnight drying time. But how do we know which ones they are? If I'm doing glass, like I just did two glass tabletops, I am going to wait because even if you use the thin coat of paint and work, use it, you know, do a very thin coat of paint and wait overnight and do another thin coat of paint, similar to how you would do slick stick, that waiting time is what gives you the best results, okay? You know, they, they, they don't put the directions on the container for no reason. You know, my husband does not like to read directions. Hi, Laura. Um, I do. I like to read directions. I like to research. I like to get to the meat of everything. It's, it's a sickness. I just love to know stuff. Like I like to say that I know a little about a lot of things. I'm not an expert in anything, <laughs> but, um, it just, it helps me to know, you know? And so when I first started retailing, actually I, I used the paint long before I retailed and, um, I wanted to know exactly how to use it properly. So if and so you will you will almost never need to use these two products together almost never there are times when you have a a rogue stain not necessarily a tannin but a stain we had a girl recently on the retailer's page that she had it was plastic so she used lipstick which she should have but she was getting a weird stain coming through the paint who knows what it was? I mean, it could have been prep problem, but it could have been just, um, you know, the manufacturing of the plastic. It could have had some kind of a solvent in it or, or who knows. But in that situation, you may need to use both of them. But 99% of the time, you will never have to use both these products on the same piece unless you have plastic appliques. I just did a piece recently where the piece was wood, the whole piece was wood, but it had decoration on it that were plastic. I was like, what? I was, you know, sanding everything back and distressing and everything. I'm like, okay, this is plastic. <laughs> no wonder the paint's not sticking to it. And so, you know, so I would never say you wouldn't use them 
So it's really the wrong thing to say. You, I'm not saying you'll never use these two on the same piece. You should just never have to use them on the same part of the piece. So like this drawer, okay? You shouldn't have to use boss and slick stick on this drawer. We're only going to use slick stick on this drawer, okay? Now, if I were to sand this because of whatever reason, then I don't need slick stick because this at least has, it's not plastic. I mean, I could put, a, I could get a grit into this and add some tooth to it, but then I'm going to risk staining because this is that weird wood or weird material that it just, it bleeds red. I don't even know what it is. If you guys know, if there's anybody that pops on here or in, in the replay that knows what this material is because you know, there's no place to see. I mean, it's just a, I say it's an inexpensive piece of, it's not really inexpensive. This was from Pier 1, so she probably paid a good penny for it. But it's not the quality that um, we usually work with. But I'm going to make it look cute. And if you guys have a suggestion on color, I am open. This one, this one back here, I'm thinking that that is, Judy, that is what Slick Stick is for. It is an adhesion product. That's its only purpose, okay? So it's like right in the name, okay? So Slick Stick, you're only going to use this for adhesion. And you shouldn't need this if your piece is wood, okay? Because wood is porous. The paint is going to stick to the wood. If you have a wood piece that has a polyurethane coating on it, and it's in very good condition, and you're not going to have to sand it. You're just going to clean it really, really well. And it's slick. It's got a shine to it. You can use slick stick. But you won't have to use boss because you're not sanding through that polyurethane finish. You see what I'm saying? So I've had pieces where, you know, I, don't, I might have to fix a part of it and sand it a little bit. And that one spot will bleed. Seriously. I mean, it'll be a wood piece. I had a dresser. I gotta get off my feet. So I had a dresser and it was um, wood, but it had some issues that I had to fix. And so I, you know, I had to sand a little bit. And so I sanded through this, the finish on it. And that little bit of sanding that I did through the finish caused it to bleed. So, okay, so Carol, so a shiny wood piano, if you're not, if the piano, the piano's wood, but it has a shiny surface that's in good condition, um, you know, and when I say good condition, I mean that you're not going to have to repair it, sand through it. Um, you just would use slick stick on that. If you wanted good adhesion on a shiny surface, use slick stick. If if like I had to do, I had to repair piece parts of this dresser, the parts that I had to sand, I, I want to say that it had gouges or something and I had to use the mud and sand, you know, sanding around the, the, um, P, the, the, um, correction went through the, um, the top coat of whatever top coat was on it. Those one pieces, those one little areas are what bled. So I just spot bossed it. I bossed it in just the spots that needed it because the whole piece didn't need it because it had a finish on it. Carol, if it's in great condition and it's shiny, all you need to do is clean it really well with your white lightning, rinse off your white lightning, and then put your slick stick on it. There you go. So if, I, if it were me with a, with a piano and it, if I'm thinking like I would, you know, um, how shiny a piano is. I, I would probably use slick stick on it. Um, just for your, you know, you may not have to, but if it's shiny and good condition and you're not sanding anything on it, then just use the slick stick just to be, just to be, um, to get your good finish. Good. Judy, I would love to see the beautiful mustard color. Ooh, you know what? I have not, I have to order some. I've all, I've, I say that I've, I've never painted a piece of furniture with the kernel mustard, but I've used it so much in crafts and all the other stuff that I'm out. Isn't that crazy? I don't even know what I've used it on, but I've used a whole 16-ounce container of it. 
just using it on different projects, but I've never painted with it. This piece will probably look pretty cool. What about Colonel Mustard and Black Wax? What do you think? And I've got some Would You Bend, but I think the one I think the ones I have, I have a little medallion, so I think that they're too big for these. But um I don't know. I, I'm kind of digging that idea. The girl that sells my furniture will probably squeal when I come in there with a the yellow piece, but um, she also didn't think that my blue piece was going to sell, and it sold this weekend. Collard greens. Oh, how, what about collard greens and curdle mustard? What about collard greens blended into curdle mustard? What do y'all think with black wax? Hey, Wendy, I think that would look kind of cool. I love colored greens. Hi. So, Wendy, this is the piece that I got for free today. It's a Pier 1 TV console thing. It's not that big. See? It's, it's pretty, it's petite. But, um... She bought my big buffet, and we took this out and put mine in, and I'm just thrilled. It was such a good sale, and I was just so happy. It really lifted my spirit. So, you know, when you have things for sale, and they've been for sale for a long time, it can get discouraging. But, um, you know, I, I, when I was telling my husband about it this morning, I was like, you know, I have sold, I think, everything that I've... Painted. I think there's only like one or two things that um, we haven't, that I didn't sell. Ooh. Hey, Brittany. Brittany, we're just talking um, specialty products today. There's no, I'm not doing anything fun. Um, I've had an unusual, I, I didn't expect to have to leave the house today. So I had to drive over to one part of town, pick up, um, the furniture and then drive all the way to the other side of town and drop it off and then I had to go to the grocery store and then run home for a zoom meeting with Dixie Bell and it's just been crazy it's not been the day that I thought I was gonna have all this painted <laughs> and do you see that there's not a single brush stroke not a single brush stroke and the thing with slick stick is it has to sit actually even boss while I have the most of you on here still even boss should let's see what it says so on the boss, this is the clear for the directions. Okay, so you're going to apply it between 50 and 90 degrees, which I'm in Florida, so at least I'm inside. And stir thoroughly, and look at the bottom of this. This shows you right there why you need to stir it. All this brown stuff, this is not anything wrong with this product. This product is just the way it's supposed to be, okay? It is the, this is the particles in the product that make it work, okay? So if you get your boss and it's been sitting and you get it and it looks like this, don't call your retailer and freak out. Just get you a paint stick and stir and stir and stir and stir. All of that, oh, thank you, Wendy. All of that will um, become part of the product, okay? So don't. Don't think there's something wrong with it because I made that mistake and there's nothing wrong with it. It's perfect. Okay, and so this says to apply it. Well, there now see this thing says on here to test a small section to see if it bleeds. So they're telling you to test it first to see if you even need this because this is more expensive than your paint. Okay, I mean, well, actually this is the same price. This is the same price as the paint, this size. Um, so, when you use Boss, just like the other products, time produces good results. When you put Boss on, if you put a coat of Boss on and say you put it on in the morning and that evening you paint after it's dry and you have bleed through, there is a possibility it's just not been on there long enough, okay? So let your boss sit overnight, and then you might need a second coat. Now, there, 
even the strongest primers, some of them need two coats. I, I rarely have to use two coats with this, but that one piece I was telling you about, three coats, and I still had to change the color. Um, so time is results. So I would just say, if you have something that you think is going to be a big bleeder, put your coat of this on and wait overnight. Test it with some paint and see. And then if it still looks like it's going to bleed through, go ahead and put a second coat on. But normally you won't have to. But the longer this sits on your piece, the better the results are that you're going to get. Okay? So for both of these products, if you just have patience, work on two projects at one time. Do a coat of boss and then work on something else, you know? Um, or take a nap or have a cup of coffee <laughs> like I do. <sighs> okay, so I have, I, Patty, I see your comment there. Let's see, I have two very plain black end tables with a lip around the top end. It's Pier 1. Looks to be in pretty good condition. May have to sand something on the legs. So I sh should I begin with slick stick after clean? Okay, so, Patty, I would go ahead and use the, if it's from Pier 1 and it's something similar to this piece, I would go ahead and start with slick stick. Um, if you're sanding the legs, I would, when you sand them, use a 220 or higher and look at your sandpaper and see if you're getting any of that red dust or anything. If you do, you might have to spot it with some um, boss, depending on what color that you're going to do. And depending on it's, if it's going to be in the front, you know, you may not need boss, but um, do a little test and see. I just know that when I put any paper, sandpaper to these things, you get the red dust, and that is a sure sign it's going to bleed. <laughs> Thank you, Judy. A sunflower or something transfer. Well, we were talking about curdle mustard and maybe collard greens, so that would definitely, um, a sunflower would go. I don't have the sunflower, trans, uh, the sunflower, there's a sunflower mold now. Um, but I don't think we carry it. We, I'd have to get it from another retailer. I wonder if, um, I know a retailer. I think that sunflower mold would be pretty cool. It's, it's a, it's like comes in parts so you can like layer it and stuff. So, but there's not really a lot of surface on this because of the glass. See the glass? And I'm done painting glass for this year. <laughs> oh, I'm cracking myself up. Yeah, I'm done painting glass for this year. No, I'm just kidding. If I have a piece that needs it, I will. But these, I'm I'm just going to leave the glass like this. And I might just keep it simple. But those colors that we were talking about might keep might give it a little bit of a, um, a perk. I might play with this. You know, I've been wanting to try that um, vinegar and water thing that um, LaDawn does. Maybe I'll do Colonel Mustard with some of the um, collard greens and someone said bronze and maybe do some of that vinegar and water mix. What do y'all think? If I do that, I'll, I'll try and do some of that on camera. We'll do a live for that. And I hope to be live tomorrow. I'm not real sure what I'll do if I don't get these done at the rate I'm going. It's not going to be tonight. I, I'll try and get one, one coat on. But if anybody has any other questions, if you are watching the replay and you have a piece that you want to ask me about, please ask questions, okay? That's, that is important. You want to um, ask questions because that's the only way you're going to get your answers. And I will answer you. I will answer every question. And if you want to just private message me, go, just private message me through Paint Fixation and I'll get it. And then I can help you, you know, work through whatever project, project you're working on. Okay, so I'm going to run, um, I'm fading fast. I was up at five o'clock this morning trying to get things ready to go to the shop and I haven't had dinner yet and I have to cook for my husband tonight. I hate cooking. <laughs> I wish I had a chef, but um, I actually don't hate cooking. I hate thinking up stuff to cook. Does anybody else have that problem? I, I know, Patty, it can. And there, unfortunately, there are newer retailers who don't know how to use these two products. 
I just saw one the other day tell someone to, that, to use both of them. And Dixie Bell, the company themselves, says you should not have to use both of these. Hi, Wilma. Ever. Together. But there was that one recently that had a plastic piece that had a weird stain. Now, that's that's something that's unusual. Okay, that's we're not going to say every situation you're never going to use these two together, but um, almost all the time you won't have to because they're they do two completely different things. Slick stick is not going to prevent bleed through, even though it's white, it is not going to pre prevent it. Okay, it's still Mother's Day. I don't think so. I have dishes waiting on me and dinner to cook and kids to feed and anyway I love you guys I enjoy your company so I'm gonna let you go though and I'll think of something brilliant for tomorrow <laughs> okay take care bye